The Maxander interferometer is a useful device in the field of quantum mechanics and crystallography. Its name was derived from two great scientists, Ludwig Mack and Ludwig Zander. These interferometers can be used to demonstrate the wave nature of light and is a useful tool to measure the refractive indices of transparent objects. A simple Maxander interferometer consists of four vital elements. An incident light, for example, a laser beam, which produces a coherent light source. Two symmetric beam splitters, which are semi-silvered mirrors. An ideal beam splitter can split the light into 50% of transmitted light and 50% of reflected light. Two silver mirrors that enable the maximum reflections of beams. And two photon detectors, like screens. Before moving on, it's important to once again clarify what beam splitters do. Beam splitters reflect half of their rays with a phase shift of pi over 4, and they transmit the other half of the ray with a phase shift of 0. Mirrors, on the other hand, only reflect the incident ray with a phase shift of 0. We now have all the tools to look at a simple interferometer with one light source, two beam splitters, two mirrors, and two detectors. In this drawing, the wave with no phase shift will be colored blue, the wave with a quarter wavelength of phase shift will be green, and the wave with half a wavelength of phase shift will be red. Let us first look at the top detector. The light source will emit a 10 watt light wave. The light wave goes through the first beam splitter the wave is then split into two separate 5 watts waves. One goes through and the other gets reflected. The wave that was transmitted through the beam splitter has no phase shift. It hits a mirror and changes direction. Mirrors do not introduce any phase shift. The waves keep going until it hits the last beam splitter on the top right. It will be transmitted by the beam splitter, therefore no phase shift is introduced. Now we can look at the other wave, the wave that was reflected at the first bottom left beam splitter. It will have a quarter of a wavelength phase shift. It hits the mirror and arrives at the last beam splitter. It will then be reflected by the beam splitter again, introducing another phase shift of a quarter wavelength. The wave already has a phase shift of a quarter wavelength, but we add another quarter wavelength on top of that it will have a phase shift of half wavelengths. Past the beam splitter, the two waves will arrive at the top detector, one blue and one red. From wave interference, we know that when there is a phase difference of half wavelength between two waves, they will interfere destructively, causing no resultant wave reaching the top detector. Now we can look at the bottom detector. Everything is the same before waves reaches the last beam splitter. The wave that went through the first beam splitter undergoes reflection caused by the beam splitter, experiencing a phase shift of a quarter wavelength. The wave that was reflected by the first beam splitter will go through the last beam splitter, causing no phase shift. Therefore, it will stay green. As we can see, the two waves arriving at the second detector will both be green. Two waves that are in phase will interfere constructively. And since each wave is 5 watts, the second detector will detect a 10 watts wave. So to recap, in this video, we've talked about the history of the Max Sender interferometer, what it's made of, how waves interfere, how instant beams of light react to mirrors and beam splitters including how a beam splitter can induce a phase shift to the wave it reflects, how the waves interact as they go through the interferometer, and finally, what happens once they arrive at the detectors. We hope you guys enjoyed our video. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and see you next time.